Okay. Hello, uh, sorry for the delay and uh, welcome everyone to the study jam in machine learning and TensorFlow. Uh, so I'm Yusuf Bin Dieb. I work as a team lead at InstaDeep, which is an African AI startup. And today I will be conducting the machine learning and TensorFlow uh, study jam. So uh, this study jam is done by uh, the Google developer ecosystem. And in the developer ecosystem, we have two types of programs. So we have the Google developer groups, uh, which are local groups of developers who are specifically interested in Google products and APIs. And each local group is called a GD chapter and can host a variety of technical activities for developers. Uh, from just a few people getting together to watch our latest videos to large gatherings with demos in tech talks and uh, to hackathons. Also, we have the Women Tech Makers, which is a program that provides visibility, community, and resources for women in technology. So, for the study jam, uh, it, uh, in the study jam, we are going to learn how to set up uh, development and production environments in the cloud and how to use the machine learning uh, TensorFlow and APIs. So uh, this is a live session of uh, three hours. And after that, you can uh, finish the rest uh, of the quit clubs. It can take from uh, two to eight hours. And uh, as uh, an end result, uh, you will get badges from, uh, from the quit clubs from Google. And also, you can get a certificate Certificate of Antennas uh, from Google. Also, uh, you can get uh, one month free access to the course of uh, TensorFlow on Google Cloud Platform uh, on Coursera.org. So in order to get the certificate of attendance, you have to first, you, first you have to be re registered and check it in. Then you have to finish the four quick labs. And after that, you have to fill the, the feedback. I will provide the, all the links at the end of this presentation. Uh, also, as I said, when you finish the four quick labs, you, you will get uh, a, month, a one month access to the Coursera specialization of uh, TensorFlow on Google Cloud Platform. So let's dive into machine learning and deep learning and AI. So what's an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of rules to be followed when solving problems in machine learning algorithms take in data and perform calculations to find an answer. Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry, just a minute. So, uh, so using an algorithm to calculate uh, something doesn't automatically mean that it's a machine learning or AI based, was being used. So uh, artificial intelligence is the ability for uh, of a computer or a program or a machine to think like humans do. And uh, machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence, which is a set of algorithms that will give the machines the skills to learn from examples without without being explicitly programmed. And deep learning itself is a subfield also from machine learning, which uses uh, artificial neural networks. And uh, at the most basic level, machines equipped with AI imitate the human thought process, such as the ability to identify an apple or, or an orange. With machine learning, a system improves its pattern recognition capabilities by learning from its own mistakes. Uh, through deep learning, a machine can process large amounts of data, recognize complex patterns, and provide more detailed insights. So the three reasons for the success of the deep learning are basically uh, the data, 
uh, in the last few years, we were able to get a, a huge amount of data, and this is thanks to the uh, to the internet and the IoT devices. Uh, also, the second reason is the compute capability, the compute power, which are GPUs, and now we have uh, the Google's GPUs. And the third reason is the open source uh, research, where you can find all the new research uh, articles online, and they are free. So in machine learning, we have basically three types. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, I thought uh, it wasn't working. Uh, I thought it wasn't live. So uh, we have, we say we have three types of uh, machine learning. So we have uh, first the supervised learning, where for the model we have to provide the input as well as the output. Okay. Uh, sorry for the for the sound. Uh, it was muted during all the presentation, uh, so I will go back to the beginning of the presentation. Okay. So I will start uh, back from the beginning. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to this study jam in machine learning and TensorFlow. Uh, I'm Yusuf Ben Diep. I work as a team lead at InstaDeep, uh, which is an African AI startup. And today I will be conducting the, the study jam in machine learning and TensorFlow. Uh, so this is done by uh, the Google Developer Ecosystem. Uh, the Google Developer Ecosystem uh, community has two programs. Uh, it has the uh, Google Developer Groups, with, which are GDGs. They are local groups of developers who are specifically interested in Google products and APIs. Each local group is called a GDG chapter and can host a variety of technical activities for developers, from just a few people getting together to watch our latest videos, to large gatherings with demos and tech talks, to hackathons. And we have the Women Tech Makers which is a program that provides visibility, community, and resources for women in technology. So uh, in this study jam, uh, we are going to learn how to set up a how to set up a development and production environment in the cloud using the Google Cloud Platform and how to use along uh, uh, TensorFlow and machine learning APIs. So uh, this session will take uh, three hours online. After that, uh, you will finish the remaining quick labs. It will take about two to eight hours. 
and as a result you will get uh, badges from quick labs when you finish the quests also you will get a certificate of attendance from Google. So in order to get the certificate of attendance, you have to be registered in Checkedin. Also, you have to finish uh, four quick labs and you have to fill the feedback uh, form. Uh, also, when you finish the four quick labs, you will get access to Coursera, uh, to the specialization in Coursera. It's called uh, TensorFlow on Google Cloud Platform. You will get a uh, one month free access to this uh, specialization. So, uh, what's an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of rules to be followed when solving problems. In machine learning, algorithms take in data and perform calculations to find an answer. And using an algorithm to calculate something doesn't automatically mean machine learning or AI was being used. Uh, so, artificial intelligence is the ability of a computer program or a machine to think like humans do. And machine learning is a subfield uh, of machine learning. Uh, which, uh, which uh, machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence, uh, which is a set of algorithms that gives the machine uh, the skills to learn from examples without being explicitly programmed. And deep learning is a subfield from the machine learning itself. And uh, basically, it uses the artificial neural networks. So at the most basic level, machines equipped with AI imitate the human thought process, such as the ability to identify an apple and orange. And uh, with machine learning, a system improves its pattern recognition capabilities by learning from its own mistakes. While through deep learning, a machine can process large amounts of data, recognize complex patterns, and provide more detailed insights. So uh, there are three reasons that uh, made the success of the deep learning. The first one is the, is the huge amount of data. And this is thanks to the internet and the IoT devices. And the second reason is the compute uh, power, and which are uh, uh, high performance uh, CPUs and uh, GPUs. And now we have the uh, Google's uh, TPUs. And the third reason is the research which is, which is now uh, open source you can find more than 99 percent of the papers in ai you can find them uh, freely online in uh, arxiv.org so in machine learning we have three types we have the supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning for the supervised learning uh, we provide to the model uh, the input in the output and each time it tries to learn from its mistakes. Uh, however, for the supervised learning, uh, the big problem is the labeled data. Uh, it takes a lot of time uh, and it's costly to label all the data because it needs to be done manually. The second type is the unsupervised learning where you give the, uh, the computer, you give it the data and uh, the algorithms uh, try to classify by themselves without giving them the output. Uh, however, for now, the unsupervised learning is more, more into research and we don't have really, really good results with that. And the third type is reinforcement learning. It's where the, the agent uh, or the algorithm learns uh, for, uh, from, uh, from iterations so instead of giving it data, we will put it into an environment and from the interaction with the environment, it will learn uh, how to act. So for example, uh, here we can see the environment here and the agent from DeepMind here. Uh, we, we can see also reinforcement learning in Atari games. So uh, usually, uh, 
Reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, we always use an environment, and the agent try uh, tries always to react with the environment to get the best uh, the best score. So, in reinforcement learning, we have, for example, the AlphaGo, which is uh, the best for now the the best uh, algorithm in uh, reinforcement learning in deep reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, we have, for example, uh, in computer vision, uh, the prediction from the image of the retina. Uh, we can predict things that doctors can't predict from imaging. Uh, another applications of uh, AI uh, and uh, supervised learning here, for example, we give uh, the model the edges. And in this work, we present. Uh, we give him the input and tries to generate the output. So uh, these types, we call them GAN, Generative Adversarial Networks. So we tra train them on a lot of images, and after that, they will try to generate uh, new da data that haven't been seen before. Uh, this is another example where we implement uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning. So here also we implement uh, object tracking. So this is a video of, a, of the implementation of a smart shop where uh, the program uh, tries to identify each time uh, the product that was taken by the, by the customers and uh, tries to track the, uh, the product to the customer, with the customer. So uh, the tools that you can use to implement uh, machine learning algorithms, first, the easy ones are the machine learning APIs in the Google Cloud. So you don't have to train your model or define your model or build them from scratch. You just use pre-trained models. And this is very fast and doesn't need uh, expertise at all in machine learning or deep learning. Uh, also, you, you could use the Cloud Auto ML which is in beta version. And uh, the second option is to use TensorFlow. However, uh, in this option, you, you need to learn first the basics of uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning. And after that, uh, you can, if you, even if you don't have enough compute power, you can use it on the cloud like we are going to do in the next quick labs. So let's start with the quick lab. So this is uh, the, uh, this link is for the feedback. You have to to do the form for the feedback after after the session. And this link is for the quick lab. And this link here is for the form of the Coursera after finishing the four quick labs. So in order to get uh, so when you will follow this this link, you will get uh, one month free on quick lab. However, you should open it in a new incognito window. So we have to copy this link and go to a new incognito window. So let me go to another. So uh, here, when you go to the link, you have to uh, to sign in if you have a, a Quick Lab account or to do join. So here, we are, I'm going just to sign in, and I'm going to sign in with Google. So here, when you sign in, you have to find uh, this monthly subscription. Okay. So in order to know that you, you, you did the right procedure, here you, you have to find the monthly subscription. So with this monthly subscription, you have uh, one month free access. And you can do as many uh, quick labs as you want. And uh, when you finish in this month, when you finish a quest, a quick lab quest, which is uh, a set of, uh, quick lab, uh, of quick labs, so each one of these are a quick lab, and uh, a quest is, is all the set of these quick labs. So when you finish a set within this month, you will get uh, another month for free.
So the quick lab we are going to do today, uh, you have to search here for TensorFlow. On Google Cloud Platform. So this is uh, a quest on Terminate Machine Learning TensorFlow on Google Cloud Platform. So for me, I already enrolled in this quest. For you, you have to uh, to hit en uh, uh, enroll uh, in this quest. And today we are going to do the TensorFlow for Poets Quick Lab. So in this Quick Lab, we are going to uh, take a pre-trained model on ImageNet. And we are going to train it on uh, other images uh, on a small data set without retraining all the network. And in a small amount of time, we will get a, a fully trained network giving uh, good results. So in order to start the lab, you have to hit start lab. And here you have to use your subscription. So next you will find all the steps in here. So first uh, we are going to open the Google Cloud Console. You just hit the Open Google Cloud Console. And here you don't use your email, you have to use uh, the username provided here. And the password too. And we have to accept agreement. And you, you click on done. So here we have the Google Cloud uh, Platform. Okay, so we agree. Agree and continue. So in the Google Cloud Platform, here we have the console. So it uh, it's an active cloud shell. It's basically a, a Linux machine. So it accepts all the Linux commands. So what we are going to do now, uh, we are going to follow these instructions on how to train the model. So first we are going to create a virtual machine instance on Google Cloud Platform. So here we have to go to the Compute Engine and Virtual Machine Instances. So you click on create and you have to put these uh, configurations. We have to name it dev host. So the name is dev host. Uh, the region is US Central 1 and the zone is US Central 1A. Okay. And the machine machine type is uh, four vCPUs and one high CPU four. So we will look for n one high CPU four. 
that's this one okay and the boot disk we have to change it to you want to 16.04 Okay. And identity and API access, we have to set it to allow full access to all cloud APIs. Uh, okay. Then after that, we click on create to create the virtual machine instance. So all the training we are going to do, we are going to do it on this instance. So it's quite easy to create an instance on uh, Google on uh, Google Cloud Platform. We will wait for the instance uh, to start in order to access it. So for the quick lab, if you didn't get this monthly subscription, if you find here uh, written zero credits, then you have to, to go to incognito mode and try to, to pass the link there of the quick labs and uh, try to log in or create an account. So we wait till the virtual machine is created. Oh, okay. So after that, we click on SSH in order to access the machine. Okay. So here we check the progress. You just hit, uh, after finishing uh, this task, you hit uh, check my progress. Okay, if you didn't finish the creation of the virtual machine, it, it's not gonna be taken like that. So the next step is to install TensorFlow. So first we update the packages of the virtual machine. Using sudo apt-get update. Then uh, we will install uh, Python, Python pip. Okay. So after that, we'll install TensorFlow. So after installing TensorFlow, well, we will test it. So first we have to go to Python and uh, import TensorFlow 
xdf then we will create a constant called hello and having as a value uh, hello tensorflow after that we create a session and we'll try to print uh, the constant we we just create so this is the first tutorial on tensorflow okay after that we will uh, quit python okay so here also you have to check the progress so just click on check my progress and now we are going to download the uh, the github repo for the tensorflow for poets so uh, this repo contains uh, the code to train uh, a given model on, on a specific uh, data set so it's basically for image classification so we have to clone the repository just paste this command here uh, after that we change the directory to the to this repo go to tensorflow for quotes too and we check the progress again so after that before starting the training uh, we will need to download the images so the images are here in this url so we just download them and uh, when we list the folders in in the images we just downloaded we will find uh, five uh, categories we have the daisy dandelion roses sunflowers and tulips so uh, the model we we are going to train is already pre-trained on imagenet which is a large data set with uh, around uh, with thousand categories However, we are not going to train all uh, the model. We are going to freeze uh, most of the layers of the element uh, of the of the model, and uh, we'll just use the last trail and retrain it on these uh, categories to get a model uh, that can classify all these five uh, five classes, five types of flowers. So. So after that, we are going to move the flower photos to the TF files, uh, TF files folder. It has to be there. We check the progress again. And now for the retraining of the network. Uh, we can uh, retrain an Inception v3 model or a mobile net. Uh, Inception v3 is more accurate. However, uh, the mobile net model is uh, faster and we can use it even for uh, real time. So uh, here we will set the size of the images. So uh, we will use the size of uh, 224 pixels by 224. We will create an environment variable which is called image size, and here we create an environment variable uh, for the model. So we are going to use, uh, to use a mobile net model. So as you can see here. We have the accuracy of the model, and here we have the number of uh, parameters. So this is the VGG16, for example, this is the AlexNet, and this is the MobileNet. So as you can see here in the MobileNet, we have uh, multiple models. So the smaller the model, uh, the less the accuracy we can have. And uh, after that, we will configure the fire firewall in order to access TensorBoard. So TensorBoard is used to monitor the training of the model. So we have to go back to the console. 
and we click on devos the name of our uh, virtual machine and after that we have to go to uh, network interfaces And then we have to add the firewall rule. So click on firewall rules and add the firewall rule. Or create a firewall rule. So we'll create a firewall rule for the tensor board. So here we will name it uh, tensor board. And the target is our instances in the network. I go to target and specify all instances in the network. Uh, the source IP ranges we have to put it to 0 .0 .0 slash 0. And for the protocol imports, we have to check TCP and then type 6006. TCP and 6006 and create. So the, the firewall tool is created. Okay, then we check the progress again. So everything is okay. And now we will start the uh, tensor board. So we go back to the SSH window and we launch uh, tensor board. So in order to access tensor board, uh, you have to type the external IP address instead of dev host and specify the port 6006 so the external IP address okay we have to go back here compute engine And virtual machine instances. And here you can find the IP address. So this is the external IP address. So in another tab, you just uh, put the IP address and uh, two points, then 6006, specify the port. And uh, that's uh, that's why you can log to the tensor board. So for now we don't have uh, any training, so we have nothing to show here. Okay, so let's go back to the to our training. So uh, the training script is uh, retrain here. So in order to investigate it, to see uh, what are the arguments for the training. So we can set, the, for example, the learning rate, uh, for, uh, the image directory, and you, you just need to investigate a little bit uh, uh, the arguments here in order to play a bit around with the, with the model. With the, with the script for training the model. So now we are going to launch the training on the images we, we just downloaded. So we'll use uh, these settings. So for bottleneck here, we, we mean the the, the just the final layer before the softmax the, that's why we call it bottleneck so this layer will be trained and uh, all the other layers uh, will be freezed 
For the training sets, we will use 500. For the model directory, uh, we will put the files and models. And the architecture here, we defined already the mobile net. Okay, so we launch the training. So uh, what the model is doing right now, since we freeze the first layers, uh, almost all the layers of the network, uh, except the, the bottleneck layer. So uh, when we pass an image to this layer, so since they are freezed, we will always have the same features and the same output. So uh, the script is now saving all these features in the disk so that it can just reuse them again without uh, recalculating or the, redoing all the math uh, behind them. <coughs> so it will take uh, some time to save the features. So this is the shape of the graph. You can see it also in TensorBoard. So here we have to just to wait for our training. So in the remaining time, uh, you can read this part here, uh, explaining what's the bottleneck and how it's used to train the, the model. Okay, so we have uh, finished the training and we go to TensorBoard. So uh, in TensorBoard, uh, we are going to find uh, all the graphs for the training. So the most important ones are the accuracy and the cross entropy. So this is our loss and the objective of our model is to minimize the loss and to get a uh, better accuracy. So the accuracy of the model is uh, almost 95%, as you can see. Okay, so after this step, uh, 
Uh, we are trying to, we will try to classify uh, these images. So just copy this part. We give it the, the image and uh, here we can get the, the prediction of the model with uh, the probability for each class. So here it predicted uh, this flower here as a daisy and with the score of uh, with a probability of uh, 99% and the probability of 0.5% uh, for the dandelion and 0.4% for the sunflowers and almost zero for the others. So using uh, a rose image for example, we will try it with this image. So it predicted as a rose, which is correct, uh, with a probability of 97%. Uh, so other things you can do after that with the model is uh, try to change some hyperparameters and retain your model. Also, uh, you can uh, download other images and train the model on your own categories. It will be a very good exercise to, to practice with. So here you have to test the knowledge, your knowledge. So in transfer learning, when you build a new model to classify your original data set, you reuse the feature extraction part and retrain the classification part with your data set. So this method, method uses less computational resources and training time. Deep learning from scratch can take days, but transfer learning can be done in shorter order, in short order. So here it's true. And this way uh, you have finished a uh, lab. So you just click end lab and close the open window here for Google Cloud Platform and for TensorBoard. And when you go back, you will find that it's uh, it has a tick like this one. So this is uh, for the quick lab. After that, you can finish the remaining quick labs for machine learning with TensorFlow, uh, image classification of coastline uh, for the flood, you know, flood detection, and predicting house prices using the Cloud ML engine. And after that, uh, learn to create an app for object detection using TensorFlow and the Google Cloud Platform. So for now, I want to go back to the, to the basics. Uh, I want to show you how to create a model from scratch using TensorFlow. So first I'm going to uh, go through a, a, a presentation done by uh, Martin Gerner. He works at Google as a, in the Google Cloud Platform team. Mm -hmm. Go here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the presentation is called TensorFlow and Deep Learning without a PhD. So in this, pre uh, in this presentation, you are going to learn uh, how to implement a model from scratch, uh, starting from a one layer fully connected to a fully convolutional neural network. So the data set we are going to use here is the, is the MNIST data set. It's the data set for the handwritten uh, digits. So uh, for the most basic model, uh, before deep learning, we are uh, we were using uh, just fully connected models, uh, very simple models of neural networks. So what we were doing is uh, we take an image which is twenty eight pixel by twenty eight uh, by twenty eight pixels, and we flatten it so we get uh, uh, one vector of seven hundred and eighty four pixels. And we put the, the neural networks as the outputs here. So we have uh, 10 digits from 0 to 9. 
so we'll use uh, 10 neurons so the first neuron will predict the probability if uh, if this image is zero the second one will predict the will give us the probability for the if this image is uh, is one or is a two <coughs> so uh, what each neuron does is that it multiplies each pixel so here uh, for the pixels they are our inputs and it multiplies uh, the value of each pixel here by a weight okay and it tries to find the best value for the weights in order to get a correct prediction so uh, after multiplying all the inputs by the weights, we will get uh, numbers here. And for these numbers, we will give them uh, an activation function, which is called softmax, which will give us uh, the probability. So when we add all the values in here, we will get a probability, uh, we will get one. So uh, mathematically, it's a matrix multiplication operation. So we have 100 images in here, and for each image we have 784 pixels. And uh, the other mat matrix for the weights, it's a matrix of uh, 784 lines. So each line will be multiplied by an input, these are the weights. And uh, of 10 columns, because we have 10 classes. So it's basically a matrix multiplication. And after uh, these multiplications, we will add the biases from 0 to 9. And uh, the, our goal uh, is to find, as we said, the best, uh, the best weights in here. So our goal is to minimize uh, the loss function, which is the output, the output here uh, of the softmax. So this is the predicted uh, output. So uh, for the multiplication we did, uh, the neural network we were talking about earlier here. So it can be uh, written uh, as a one line uh, of code. So it's the multiplication of the inputs by W and we will add biases. And after that, uh, we pass uh, all these results in the softmax function. And uh, that's how we get the predictions, the, uh, the, the outputs. And we get the probabilities. So in TensorFlow, uh, we can write it in just one line of code. Uh, and we, will not, uh, go, we are not going to stress uh, on this because we are going to use df.keras, which is uh, easier and requires uh, less lines of codes. So after getting the, the probabilities, the predictions, here we will use the cross entropy. So uh, we have the label, for example, if we have, uh, if we give the network uh, an image where there is a uh, six handwritten, so the true label is, will be encoded in this way. It's called uh, one hot encoded. So all the other values will have zero, while the six value will have one. And here we have the outputs, which are the computed probabilities. And so basically it will be, uh, for the six here, it will have the best probability. So we will compute the course entropy, which is the sum of the ground truth uh, multiplied by the logarithm of the predictions and uh, the closest these probabilities are to these values uh, the smaller the cross entropy so uh, our goal here is to minimize the cross entropy which is our loss function so using a smaller network like this one we can get uh, an accuracy of uh, almost 90 percent or 89 percent in the good loss oh, sorry we get uh, an accuracy of 92 percent so we are go we're not going to dive in, uh, in this tensor flow. Okay. So uh, in order to get better results, we just need to go deep. So we add more other layers. So these layers here, we call them uh, hidden layers. 
and we just uh, compute the softmax at the final layer but for, for these layers here we will we'll just use the sigmoid function so this is the illustration of the sigmoid function this is the graph and we are not going to dive in this code so the problem here when we use the, the sigmoid function in this layer here in the hidden layers we will go uh, we will get a slow start so we will change the sigmoid function by the ReLU function which is a quite easy uh, activation function so if the value of the output of the neuron is uh, zero or less we will give it zero and if it's uh, greater than zero we'll give it the same value of the output of the neuron so that's how it's written in uh, in tensorflow so as you can see here the difference between the sigmoid activation functions and the ReLU functions and this is the loss however here we have uh, uh, a noisy accuracy curve so we will uh, change the learning uh, the learning rate through iterations and when we ch change when we uh, decrease the learning rate we will get uh, less noise in here and less noise in the loss function however in here we we got an overfitting as you can see here the training uh, the loss function for the training uh, is good while for the for the test uh, it's overfitting so what what our uh, network is doing for now it's uh, trying to memorize uh, the images it sees in the training however it couldn't uh, generalize for other images like for the test images so to overcome overfitting uh, it's very easy we can we just add dropouts so the principle of the dropouts is to uh, uh, is to remove some neurons from the computations, uh, and we we should precise the the ratio of the neurons we have to remove. So each time we remove some of them in, in each iteration. So using dropout, uh, we will get a better uh, accuracy graph, a better uh, loss graph so we don't have overfitting after here however if we still have overfitting it means that we have too many neurons in our network or we have we don't have enough data so if you have the, a small amount of data uh, you will be always overfitting or we have a bad network architecture and we have to use another architecture so after the fully connected network, now we are going to uh, implement a convolutional neural network. So, so the principle of the convolutional neural network so is that we do not flatten the input image. So we image uh, as it is. Uh, it's 28 by 28 by 3. And by 3 here, uh, if it's uh, uh, a, colored a colorized image, we will have the red and green and blue channels. So the principle, the principle of the convolution layers is that each neuron uh, will compute the the weights here for uh, for some uh, for for some inputs, okay, uh, in a square shape. So this is our kernel in here. So this is how we uh, we compute the convolution. We iterate uh, from here to to the end of the of the input, and in convolutions. So so here we have so for this one uh, we call it a channel, and each channel has uh, separate weights. It computes separate weights, and in here we have also two other terms. We have padding and stride. So what we call padding is that we pad the image in the borders with zeros so that we get uh, another image with the same size. And the stride is the is how the uh, is the step uh, we use for the convolution. For here, for example, the stride is one because we we go with one pixel each time. 
So for the convolution learning network, we go from this size and we, we start downsizing uh, the network till we get uh, till we go to the fully connected layers and for the output layers. So what we did earlier in the Quick Lab, basically we we have a trained network with all these weights trained. So uh, we freeze the weights in here and we retrain it just the fully connected layer here. Okay, so I'm going to see the code. So using a fully connected uh, network, we were able to get an accuracy of 98.9%. However, uh, we, have, uh, we have an overfit in here, as you can see. So this is overfitting. And as we said, the solution for the overfitting would be the dropout. However, for convolution neural networks, we never add dropout in the convolution layers. We only add them in the fully connected layers in here. So this way, uh, we get 99.3% uh, accuracy. And we get rid of the dropout. So uh, this is uh, just a summary for what we have seen. OK, so now we are going to implement uh, to implement uh, these networks. Okay, so you have to go to this link uh, bit.ly and tf phg. So, in here, you will find a folder called Collapse, and uh, you open uh, this notebook called TensorFlow, TensorFlow 2.0 Practical. And here you just hit uh, run in Google Colab so that you can run it on uh, on the cloud. So uh, Google Colab is uh, uh, so the Google Colab you can run there uh, any notebook if you don't have uh, enough compute power. You just use theirs; they will give you uh, free compute power. So you you go here and change runtime type. And you select GPU, so you can train on CPU, on GPU, or on TPU. <clears throat> so the first thing we are going to do is we. Uh, so after that, we have you have to read carefully this uh, this notebook in here. We have a lot of details in here for the fundamentals. So first, we are going to install dependencies like Tensor Three, uh, TensorFlow 2.0. Also, we'll uh, start TensorBoard. Okay, we start tensor board. And so the first thing we are going to load the data set. So uh, tf.keras it has already uh, MNIST. So we will load the MNIST data set. Then we will create the train image uh, and their labels. Also uh, the test images and their labels. And after that, here we are going to normalize the data. So the X train and X test, we will divide them by 255. So that we get uh, images with, uh, with values between 0 and 1. 
So first we are going to create this network in here. So it's easily implemented in uh, tf.keras. Uh, so in uh, tf.keras, uh, uh, we just create a sequential model. Okay. Uh, so the first layer is going to flatten the image since it's a 28 by 28 pixel. It will uh, flatten it to 784 pixels. And after that, it will pass it uh, to a dense layer, the only layer we have, a fully connected layer. In Keras, it's called a dense, uh, with 10 uh, outputs, 10 neurons, and with an activation, uh, tf.nm.softmax. So here we define the model. And when you click on, uh, when you write model summary, it will give us the summary of the model and the total number of parameters with the trainable and non-trainable. And after that, we are going to define the loss. So for the loss, we are going to use sparse categorical uh, cross-entropy. And the optimizer, we are going to use uh, the stochastic gradient descent and we define the learning rate. So uh, in order to train the model, we have first to compile the model. We're defining the optimizer, the loss and the matrix. And after that, so the, these two lines are just for TensorBoard. And here to train the model, we have to, uh, you, you just write model.fit. You give it uh, the X train and Y train. So X train are the images for the training and Y train are the labels for the images. We specify the batch size, we will put uh, 100 and the epochs, we will put 300 epochs. The, for the validation data, we give it the X test and Y test. And for the callback, we give it the TensorBoard callback. And we call the, this function here. So a simple model like this one using uh, tf.keras, you can uh, train it using only four or five lines of code, no more. So here we can see the, the loss and the accuracy for, <coughs> for each epoch. <coughs> these are the validation loss and accuracy, and these are the training loss and accuracy. So for now, here we are in 89 and 90% accuracy. And in order to visu visualize the results in TensorBoard, so you click on Visualize in TensorBoard and click on this link here. And as you can see here in the graphs, in the tensor board, so uh, the blue one is for the validation and the orange one is for the training. So this is the accuracy graph and the loss graph. So after that, we say that uh, we have to go deeper and add uh, four more layers. So here, <coughs> you have to implement uh, this code by yourself. So what you are going to do basically is uh, like this one, we, we are going to add four other uh, fully connected layers, like this one. However, here uh, you are not going to use softmax, you are going to use sigmoid function. And you will name the layer, uh, for example, hidden one. And put uh, three more other layers. Okay, so here we are going to call them hidden two, 
hidden three and hidden four. <coughs> Okay, so we have sigmoid activation functions. And here for the units, so in the final layer we have 10, uh, 10 units, 10 neurons. However, uh, in here we have for the first layer we have 200, then 100, then 60, then 30. So we will change these to 200, 100, 60, and 30. And define the layer. So using model that summary, we will see uh, the number of uh, the summary for our model and the number of parameters. So here we have 185,000 uh, parameters, which are trainable. Uh, so uh, again, training the model, uh, it's only in two lines of code. So we have first to compile the model, specify the optimizer, uh, the loss and the metrics. Then using model.fit, you train the model, you give it the X train, Y train, number of epochs. So all of these are not changed. So I will stop the training here and try to visualize it in TensorBoard. So here we can see the graphs for our second training here, which are these graphs. So the problem here is, uh, uh, as we said earlier, uh, we have a slow start. So we have to change, uh, you have to change the activations by the, uh, the sigmoid activation by the ReLU. So you just say change it like that. So uh, after uh, this session, please uh, try to do it by yourself and try to find uh, the solution by yourself. That's how uh, with this with the practice, that's how you are going to learn it. You have to try it by yourself. So we define the model, we get the model summary. And after that, uh, we will change the optimizer. We can use the, for example, the Adam optimizer. So we have just to change it here. Instead of uh, SGD here, we use the TF that trained that Adam optimizer. So the Adam optimizer uh, will take care of the learning rate decay. So I'm not going to run the training in here. After that, you have to add the dropout. So uh, in case you are stuck, uh, you just open the solution and you will find the solution. So you have to add the dropout to the model here. And in the next step, so here you are going to train the model. And after that, uh, you are going to implement the fully convolutional model. So it's quite easy also. So what you have to do is to implement a few convolutional layers. So convolutional layers are defined as follows: the f that carries that layers that come to d. So for the filters, it's the number of channels, the number of channels in here. So we have six channels for the first layer, as written in here. The kernel size, uh, it's written here. So it's the size of the kernel for the convolution. The padding, so it's same since we don't have uh, a difference between the, these two sizes, 28 by 28 and 28 by 28. So we put padding equals same instead of valid. So for the other layers, you will have to use valid for this one, for example. And for the strides, 
so here we have for the first layer we have a stride of one and then we, we are going to use a stride of two so we have just to change this to two and here you have to precise the activation function we say that we are going to use the ReLU, it's better than sigmoid and after that you are going to create the other layers like this one and uh, also don't forget the dropout in the fully convolutional layer here you will add the dropout after this layer one uh, this layer here and you are going to train the model So here we are done with this uh, presentation. So we close tensor, uh, tensor board. Uh, in case you didn't follow the how to access uh, this this collab, uh, so the link is bit.ly slash tf dash phd. So this is the link you have to follow. And here uh, you will find, so you'll find the, the presentations of uh, Martin Gurner. So you can also watch the, the explanation and the presentation of Martin Gurner of the, the slides uh, I just presented. So I advise you, you watch this first. Uh, also, you have the slides in here. And you have other presentations too for the batch normalization, recurrent neural networks, and for the modern uh, models in convolution nets and uh, recurrent neural network architectures. And a good presentation on deep reinforcement learning. And for the collab, you can find it here in uh, the folder collabs. So as I said, you open it and then you just do run in Google Colab. So uh, let me uh, answer the question uh, that uh, Hussein asked. He said, why did you change from uh, Sigmoid to Relu? So as we have shown here, uh, if you can see the, the difference in here, so we have a slow start at the beginning. Uh, so when we change the ReLU, here you can see the difference. So uh, the model will will converge faster than the using sigmoid. Okay. So you can see here we have 300 epochs, and this is the accuracy. So using ReLU, we uh, the model will uh, converge more faster than using uh, sigmoid. So uh, thank you for watching and. Uh, I hope it was beneficial uh, for you and you learned something. Uh, so please don't forget to fill the feedback form from this link. Also, uh, please finish uh, the, the remaining quick labs. So we have to finish four quick labs in order to have a certificate of attendance. And also in order to have uh, one month access to Coursera's uh, TensorFlow and Google Cloud Platform specialization. And also you have to fill this form of after finishing the four quick labs in order to get the Coursera uh, one month free. Okay, well, uh, thank you and uh, hope to see you soon.